Anytime you want to go deep in God, the first thing you'll encounter is darkness. It's the face of your next level. It's the face of your new dimension. And God said, I want you to settle this on the first night because he said he's tired of young people being in cycles. I hear the Holy Ghost talking right now that you come to camp and you pray through, but you go home and you face the night and you try to reject what you try to say, I guess God didn't do anything. I'm looking at night, but God said, no, 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 no. I'm about to use this to transition you. I'm about to use this that I might get glory. I'm about to use this. Don't you give up in the valley. You keep on walking until the shadow changes from the shadow of hell to the shadow of heaven. The hardest part of ministry is getting started because he has to face what I have I know is not sufficient to meet 5,000 people's needs so I want to hide it I want to go back home I want to pretend like I'm not anointed and like I have no gifting because the need is too great but he had the courage knowing he didn't have enough to get started. And when he decided to get started, that's when God decided to multiply. See, you can't meet the need until you put what you have in the hands of Jesus. And if you give it to the hand of Jesus, he song this morning. Won't you clap your hands to him?
of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you're good. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Welcome to Sunday morning today. We have uh, been at camp for three weeks or so, and so there's a whole new level of tired. It's called Camp Tired. And uh, so our, our, all our youth are up here. They're going to work through it. They're going to worship God. Will you join us today and worship God? Amen. Amen. Let me tell you how you can give to the Lord. On your way out, there'll be some ushers at the door. And also, you can go online to fbclakecharles.com forward slash giving, and you can give there. Next week is our 4th of July service. It's July the 3rd when we celebrate a day early. But we're going to celebrate the freedom to worship God. So, invite somebody to be with us, and let's worship God together and celebrate our freedom to worship God in this nation. We're so thankful for that. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. Amen. We got this next week off, but coming up the following week is our our camps, which is camp meeting. And so our dorms are open. If you'd like to stay in those dorms, we have a number that have already went online and filled out and are going to be staying in our women's and our men's dorms. We have some nice facilities. We'd love for you to stay with us. But today is the last day to sign up. So if you haven't, get on the uh, website. It's right. There's a little bar at the top, uh, fpclakecharles.com. There's a little, little red bar at the top. You can punch that and you can fill it out and you'll have a bed safe just for you. Understand, we want you to go. We want to be a part of camp meeting at a different level. There's some great speakers this year. We want to just, we want the, the, the continue the gospel in our church, but also you need to see what's happening on a state level. So if you want to go, we'd love for you to go. Amen. 
This, this, this next announcement's kind of far out there, but we want to go ahead and give it to you. It's called our Abundance Ladies Conference. It's coming up November the 11th and 12th. It's our second one, so this is going to be really great. We got some great speakers lined up. Jennifer Williams, Sharon McKee, Mandy Holloway. It's going to be an awesome time. But you need to, you need to understand, they're going to start wanting you to, to uh, sign up for that on July the 3rd. So save the date. Get ready. with all our ladies, for all our ladies, and it's going to be awesome for them. Next is our VBS. It's coming up in August, but we're going to go ahead and start signing up our volunteers. You can sign up starting July the 1st, and uh, it's going to be a great VBS for all of our kids. And so that's all our, our, our kid zone children that will be able to participate in that. So please be a part. But we want our adults and youth that want to sign up and be a part to work that we need we need your help so you can start signing up on on july the first and get ready to help us coming up for the fall they're fixing to come back and sing a an, another set of worship songs and uh, this this has kind of been in my spirit the last couple days as i was reading in the book of nehemiah chapter four it talks about sanballat and tobiah and these are the guys that are standing against what God's doing in Jerusalem, the rebuilding of the wall. And so Nehemiah is over there trying to build this wall. And these guys are speaking against what God is doing. And if I can know of anything that's going on right now, there's lots of words going on in this world. Lots of confusion. Lots of messages that are out there. If you turn on the news, you're going to hear all kinds of messages. And this is what... Sanballat and Tobiah said, they said that the wall that you're building, Nehemiah, if a fox jumped on it, it would tear it down. When we let the words from the world seep into the church, when we let words that, 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 that they're speaking, that the, 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 the messages that they're sending, when we let that come into the church, it can tear us down even though it's not true. Everyone say, it's not true. So this is what we have to do. We can't let the words that are out there echo and be in the church. Whatever happened in the book of Acts can still happen this morning. There was healings, signs, miracles, wonders, infilling of the Holy Ghost. Guess what? It still happens in 2022. The psalm they're fixing to sing says, God, turn it around. Because guess what? It's totally different within these walls. God has complete control. Why don't you lift your hands right now? And if you need something for God to turn it around, you just need to step out from where you're at and maybe come down here and join this youth group today. But understand, God can turn it around. God can can turn it around. I'm praying God come and turn this thing around. God turn it around. God turn it around, God turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. Cause all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, oh, the name of Jesus. Sing, I'm praying God come, I'm praying God come, come along, turn this thing around, God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. 
up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now. Come on. He is up to something. He is up to something. God is just he is right now. He is, he is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something.
stronger God you are higher than any problem that I face my God you are healer you are awesome in stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome in power our God yeah, our God our God sing our God is greater our God is greater our God is stronger
Hallelujah. Can you make it personal right now? My God is greater. My God is stronger. Hallelujah. Lift up your incense. Lift up your worship. Lift up your praise. Hallelujah. I set my heart to worship you. I make it a priority. I cast my eyes upon you. I put my heart heavenward. Hallelujah. Come on, prioritize your worship right now. Make it about him. Pull it out of this world. Don't worship your worry. Don't worship your dread. Don't worship the things that you can't control. Worship Jesus right now with me, can you? Your name, Jesus, is above every name. Every health report. It's above the shape of the economy. It's above the moment I'm standing in right now. I lift up the name of Jesus. I lift him up above the trial and the tribulation of my heart. I worship the name of Jesus. I declare the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, make that your testimony right now. My God is greater. My God is stronger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want you to set a tone of victory right now in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Just go ahead and dwell on his goodness for a moment, can we? His faithfulness is here today. I haven't been consistent, but his consistency is here today. I haven't been true, but his truth is here today. Hallelujah. I realign myself. I condition my heart right now. If there be any good thing, think upon those things right now. I bring my mind back into clarification of the Word of God. His name is righteous. And all men are liars. His truth is absolute. Settled. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the Word of God for which I have built my life is forever settled in heaven. Halabokehi. I will not turn to the right nor to the left, but I set my face like flint. The goodness of the Lord shall be upon me and I will see him in the day of my living. Do I have any declares in the house of God today? Do I have anybody that's a recipient of the good news and the good news is at work? Do I have anybody that's fought and overcome? You've got a testimony today. Do I have anybody that's prayed in the Holy Ghost since you got in the house of God this morning? I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Did he not say in his word, I will plant you like trees by the river? Huh? Amen. Say, we have a source. Now, I want you to listen to me carefully. Because we understand that the economy has its variance. And so you have the rise and the fall of the state and the status of man. And it'd be easy for us to attach our emotions to the rise and the fall of the stock market or any other market that holds the value of our dollar but he said I plant you like trees so when the earth around begins to dry up your roots have a deeper source and when the economy rises and falls our economy has a deeper source he will bless us to bear fruit even when others are not fruitful So tell your neighbor, say, I will be blessed. Now, how many of you know that it's not enough just to say it? 
But a testament of that faith is a praise. Amen. The altar of incense was before the altar of mercy. You got to praise him before you get to mercy. I'm not waiting to preach. I'm preaching right now. I said you got to praise him before mercy comes to you. But how many of you believe that mercy is on its way? I'm about to get the mercy of God. The mercy of God is flowing into my family. So I'm going to praise him for what I know is on the way. Amen. All right. Acts chapter 10. Get your Bibles. Stop it. Whoever's on that keyboard. That's got to be Clayton. That's a Clayton keyboard. Nope. Woo, come on, Spence. Then take it over. Baby Clayton. That's what Faith said. I'm not labeling you, baby. We're going, that's the last time that's going to be spoken. You're your own man, Spence. He's an intern with us. Aren't we glad he's with us for a couple months? Amen. I don't think it's right as a nation to celebrate our independence on the 4th of July without also recognizing that our nation has a terrible past that we overcame in regards to slavery. And I celebrate this month as it relates to the freedom of all Americans. All Americans. And you say, Pastor, is that biblical? John, in his great description of the everlasting, said, I saw people of every tribe and tongue and language. So, yes, it's biblical. We celebrate this week a tremendous victory regarding Roe versus Wade being overturned since 1973. I want to make a couple of things very clear. I celebrate that. I thank God for that. And, it, and I, no matter how you feel about President Donald Trump, if it had not been for him, we would have not had the justices in place. I want you to pray earnestly that God covers these men and women that have made this statement and whatever else might be coming. And understand a war is at hand. We're in the middle of a war. But this war is not a long political boundaries. Now you have to hear your pastor very carefully. Understand. I refuse to align this pulpit or this table with a political party. You can do what you want to do. But don't you put that on me. Slap on your bumper sticker, uh, on your car, any bumper sticker you want. But here's my problem today, right? This has been changed and altered so that it goes back to state and state government, which is the way it should always be, which is the way I feel like all of our government should be run. Because in, on the state level, we as a people have much greater voice. And that's the way government should be run. But the changing of this law will not change the number of abortions in many cases. Those that are financially able will only go across the state line. This leaves a lot of people now to travel and do the same act. I'm not bringing you down. I'm, I'm, I want to show you something that's very important. A lot of people will get in the pulpit today. A lot of preachers will hoot, will, will hoot and, and rally the troops. But you hear your pastor. The word of God makes it clear as to God's approach to abortion. He said, flee fornication. When did the church quit preaching against sin and start aligning itself with political viewpoints? Amen. 
If you want to be right and righteous, separate, separate yourself from unrighteousness. Now, I can say that and preach that with love, and I do. I want our young people to know whatever you have to do, fight temptation with all your heart. With all your heart. But I, I'm a pastor. So I want to tell you parents, you grandparents, and maybe you're here today and you have a child inside of you. And the reason why this attitude of, well, it's my body. It is your body. And it's a, a fine line in discussing and arguing, well, I, I don't want to take something. I don't want to put some kind of medication in my body because it's my body. You have a right. You have a right to refuse that because it is your body. But when life is formed inside of you, you're no longer your own, but now you're carrying another life. And that life has a choice, and to take that choice is murder. That's why abortion is different than any other aspect of an argument concerning, well, it's my body. No, it's not. And even then, your body is not your own. You're bought with a price. And if we would start thinking along those lines, things would be different. I just can't get in bed with anybody. I can't get in the back seat of a car with just anybody. Because my body is not my own. It's a temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, you won't hear that today, but that's the message that needs to be preached and let me make one more statement regarding this I can say all of that and also say this if you do end up pregnant and you're scared you made a bad choice not a mistake a choice you won't find more love than us no 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 you listen to pastor you listen because we can fight for that unborn child and be mean to that mama. Okay? We have to be very careful to say we fight for the unborn children, but we, we love that mother. When God has forgiven her, do not let condemnation... send her away if we're going to honor the overturning of road versus wade then let's honor god's plan amen so if you're if you find yourself pregnant and you don't know what to do you call us we have seen babies adopted we have pastored people through this process and seen these beautiful children grow up in wonderful homes that's right mama and I'm, I'm so happy today at that overturning. Okay, John 10. One more thing that I want to say. I know you brought your daddy last week to church and pastor consumed him. And trust me, I don't want to preach in a way that would in, in any regard hurt feelings or hurt the temperament of your family but I I must preach the word of the Lord I I want to say this with all sincerity I am a soul winner right I've heard people preach and I knew that they were not soul winners If you're a soul winner, if you sit down at a table or in a conference room with somebody and try to win them to God, then you have a different approach to preaching. I know what it's like to work hard and bring someone to the house of God. And the last thing I want to do is get up here and be a jerk, be rude, be harsh. I've done a, 
a lot of work to make sure that my personality does not come out. But I, I've got to preach the word of God. And there's one thing I cannot get away from. He said last week, and it has stuck with me, you keep kicking out against my pricking. I'm going to turn you over to your sin. That wasn't me. That was God speaking through me. Lord, do not stop wrestling with me. Do not let me become comfortable or careless in my sin. Let repentance always be nigh unto me. And so I want to say to you, thank you for allowing me to preach to your family. Acts chapter 10, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. A centurion of the band called the Italian band, devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day. Now, if you're making notes in your Bible, or some of you make notes on your phone that are then forwarded to me, because I'm a part of this phone Bible connection that I can't get out of. I've tried. I don't know how to work it. So you want to make a note right here. You have an Italian man, and look, evidently, that word evidently means by evidence. So Dr. Dr. Luke came back and sat down with Cornelius and talked to him about his conversion. And he, and he produced evidence to say, I was praying the ninth hour of the day. The reason why that's important, I'm going to preach on that in just a moment, but it's important because you have a Gentile here praying according to Jewish custom. Cornelius was monotheistic, and he believed in the invisible God of Israel. And he believed it because he saw the separation and the purity among God's people. And he said, that's the way I want to live my life. And so he was praying According to Luke, the ninth hour of the day, and the angel of God came to him and said unto him, Cornelius, when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up from a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. When the angel which spake, when Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all things to them, all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. God, I can't wait to preach this sermon. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while he made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him. And it had been a great sheet knit on the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild hogs, creeping things, crawfish, and fowl of the air, chickens, ducks. For this was the first pig in the blanket right here mentioned in Scripture. It's a dad joke, Nick. Look at you. I see your attitude. I'm looking over at your buddy Kyle, trying to get it. Go ahead and look at him. You know, if you want to look at him. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. I've seen this on a bumper sticker on a few redneck trucks right here. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Again, if you're making notes, put down beside the word common, number one, and put down beside unclean number two. Whew. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, that called not thou uncommon. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius finally made inquiries. They came. They had been coming, watch, all night long. And called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. 
while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, these three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause whereof or wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in, underline that, and write on the side, no, no, and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Father, I declare your word to be above everything in this room. We, right now, we consecrate ourselves unto you we ask, God, that you pull our earing, our hearing out from among the world. And God, let my speech right now, let it be saturated by the Spirit. I pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone say amen. amen. You may be seated. Most of you have in your driveway what we would probably categorize as a common vehicle. It's a gross forgetter. Soccer practice. It's the one that's got the bumper sticker on the backside that says, baby on board. Never understood that, right? I'm going to drive differently because there's a baby on board. There's a life driving the car, I'm assuming, so I'm going to drive safely no matter what. These common vehicles are in all of our driveways. We use them every day. We count on them, we depend on them. But in the world of automotive racing, there's a group of people that like to take these vehicles, some of them older, some of them a little bit newer, and turn them into what is known as a sleeper. A sleeper is a vehicle that looks like the gross forgetter on the outside. But on the inside, they put an engine that's over the top. They've got, in some of these, not one, but two turbos. (laughs) Some of them have a switch that says nitrogen. And they could thrust into that engine a certain boost of nitrogen when they want to. Oh, I would love to have one of these vehicles. The one I saw was a minivan, probably in the picture behind you or behind me. And (laughs) wow, isn't that great? That's over a 1,000 horsepower. Who doesn't want that minivan in your driveway right now? You know what I'm talking about? I will get my parking spot. Can you imagine pulling up beside somebody in one of these fancy cars, you know, and just looking over and going, hey, you want to go at it? You got the minivan, right? Right? Now, inside, they got that motor, and then they have a transmission, and then they have a rear end. And then they they have to put a roll cage. And in some of these, they've got a, a way for it to stop. They got these big parachutes that come off the back. I would love to do that. Now, right now, down 171, if you're coming from Moss Bluff, they've got what we would call roadblocks to keep you from going fast. It feels like they put in these bumpers. It's just the road falling apart and the taxpayer money just going somewhere else. You know I'm preaching right now. Come on, somebody in government, do something about that. A sleeper. Now, I may look like a middle-aged man with a hairline drifting. (laughs) I may have a little bump in the middle. Who's laughing right there, right? I I, I may look like that I'm a common person, 
But there's something inside of me that's very uncommon. You may look like a stay-at-home mom, but if you have a prayer life, a devotion to the Word, a commitment to fasting, then there's something uncommon about you. You may look like a seventh grader going into the eighth grade. You may look like every other person in your school, but if you got the power of the name of Jesus truly understood in your life, It may look like you're just another business owner going through a recession. It may look like you're just another grandma shopping for your babies. But let me tell you something. If greater is he that is in you is really in you. If you know how to invoke the name of Jesus, if you know how to walk in the prophetic, if you know how to call things that are not as though they were. I need somebody today that knows what it is to be uncommon, to rise up right now and give him praise. I need somebody that's different. You're different from the inside out right now to say, I'm not just like anybody, but I know how to speak against cancer, and I know how to rise up against disobedience, and I know how to thrust my heart into worship. Oh, somebody give him praise right now. Somebody give him praise right now. We're working. We're going somewhere, and we're going fast. I don't want to be just like everybody else. I'm sorry. In our text, we see where it's time for Cornelius, the first Gentile. And Brother Joe reminds me often, an Italian. It's time for God to pour out the spirit upon us, Gentiles. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. And so God's ready to do it, but he's got to awaken the message and send it. So he speaks to Cornelius and says, Cornelius, send someone to Joppa and call for Simon Peter. This comes to Cornelius when he is praying the same time that Daniel of old prayed right before he was lowered down into the den of lions. He's praying that evening prayer. Nighttime has come. And he says, God, I I, want to give you my heart. I want to give you my life. And today God answers back and says, it's time. Go get Simon Peter. There are two Peters. There's Tanner, the, Pe- the Peter that Peter Simon is staying with. He says, you go get Simon Peter, and I've got a message for him to give to you. But Simon Peter wasn't ready on the other side. Lunch the next day, the Bible says he was hungry and went up to pray before to honor his prayer life before lunch. And a sheet came down, and all types of animals were in that sheet, and he could not eat them. But God speaks and says, kill and eat. And he answers back and says two things. You know how I have never in my mouth put anything that is unclean or common. Unclean refers to the Mosaic Code, upheld by the Aaronic Code. That is the Word of God. I know your Word. I've studied your Word. I've related everything I have eaten to your Word. I have never put anything in my mouth that was classified as wrong in the 615 commandments that you gave us. I have ordered my eating habits according to the righteousness of your word. Oh, I would to God that some of us had that kind of passion to abide by the word of God. Then he said, neither have I put anything common in my mouth. The common covenant is the covenant that God gave to Abraham. Come out from among your kindred. Come out from among your family. Come out from among your people and be ye separate, saith the Lord. 
I don't want you to be common. I don't want you to think common. I don't want you to look at life in a common vein. You're never going to be called common again. You're my people. You're peculiar. You're unique. You're called after my way. And so Peter says, I have never broken the word, neither have I broken the commandment of common. And that is left there. And God answers him and says, watch, Peter, do not call common what I have cleansed. Peter is speaking about two covenants. The voice of heaven combines the covenants and says, Peter, a different approach is at hand. Don't you remember, Peter? I died on the cross. And in my testament before I died, I gave witness. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now watch, watch, because God's about to do something in this house this morning. Here's what he said. Peter, it's changed in this regard. I gave you my name, and I gave you my identity, and I gave you my process. In the Old Testament, you had the word, and you had faith, but now you've got my name and obedience unto my name. If you believe, I will do the miraculous. It's that simple, Peter. It is a difference now, Peter, between you trying to live according to a specific standard and me giving you power and uncommon authority to live a life that you can't live by yourself. Peter, do not call common what I have cleansed. Now, let me ask you a question that really stuck with me for a while. We know that God is preparing Peter to go see Cornelius, right? And has Cornelius obeyed the gospel yet? No. But look at what God is saying here in this verse. What he's speaking is past tense. Do not call common what I have cleansed. The work has already begun. The cleansing has already begun. So I begin to pray and seek God about this passage passionately. Understand, I have spent the last four or five weeks ever since Pentecost in one vein, the book of Acts. I'm consumed with the book of Acts. And as I began to preach this in my spirit and, and meditate on this and think about this, I said, God, how can I, how can I have a new Pentecost in first Pentecostal church? And how can I, how can I bring a new spirit of faith? He said, teach my people. What happened in the life of Cornelius? And I begin to study. Watch what God says to Peter. He says, Peter, I'm taking the faith in my name and the faith in my, in my word. And as soon as this Gentile Cornelius begins the process of believing, I'm beginning the process of cleansing. From, from Caesarea to Joppa was 15 miles. Cornelius receives the message of the Lord to go get Peter in the evening prayer. The sun was setting, and he brought in two of his servants, and he brought in his chief bodyguard. And he said, I know it's 15 miles, and I know you got to go all night, but I just received a word from God that I cannot ignore. I've got to obey this word. I'm bringing my family together. 
I'm bringing all of my servants together. I'm bringing anybody that loves me to my house. And we're going to wait right here. And all night long, I want you to run to the banks of Joppa. You're going to go until you find a Peter. And when you find him, you don't come back without him. The moment that Cornelius sent those men to get Peter, the miracle of salvation to his household began. God spoke to me and said, teach my people that when they believe, the miracle begins. That when they believe and have faith and take one step, my word begins to work on their behalf. When they say, this is what Jesus said in his word, it may not look like it's going to come to pass. And I may have to go all through the night. I may have to take this word and I may have to run in the middle of the dark. I may have to go mile after mile. I might get weary. I might get tired. I might get exhausted. I might be traveling through some rough terrain. But I got a word. And when I get a word, I know that if I will hold to the word, the miracle begins when I took the first step. And if I'll keep running, if I'll keep pressing, if I'll keep... If I'll keep moving, Pentecost will come my way. But I'm not going to stop until I get to where I got to go. And I come to tell somebody, if you'll have faith in God, if he said you're healed, you've got to take a step. You've got to begin to believe. My body's going to get better. My body's... If he said salvation is coming, you got to believe somebody in my family is about to talk in tongues. Somebody in my family is about to get baptized. If he said you're going to be blessed, you might be poor for another day or two, but you got to run through the night. Do I have anybody right now that will say with Pastor, I want to believe right now in a hundred soul revival. I want to see God do. <laughs> Woo! Oh, Cornelius' household was not saved yet. Listen. Cornelius' household was not saved yet. But you hear your pastor. When those men started running the 15 miles and they kept pressing through the night, that next morning, God leaned over to the angel and said, go down and visit Peter because they're coming. And I come to preach to somebody. The Lord's going to testify to the angel. Go ahead. Start talking to that person to bless my people. Start opening that door. Start. Because you ran all night long. He's about to talk on the other side to those who can bless you, to those who can increase you. Because you won't give up. He's about to give out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Huh? You may have to go through the treatment. You may have to go through the treatment at MD Anderson. But the moment you said, I will stand on the name of Jesus, being stronger than any other disease or name that could come into my life. When you made that statement, God said, okay, go ahead. Go ahead and begin to pour out the blessing. It doesn't feel like it's coming because you're running all night long. But God has already testified to Peter. They're coming. You got to get my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody reach up and get the word right now. It is past tense. You haven't received the Holy Ghost yet, but he said you're going to get it. He testified you're going to get it. Uh, 
I'm telling you, if God says, listen, if God says, do this, you cannot doubt in your heart. You cannot doubt in your heart. You look out and say, well, my God, pastor, it's dark. I don't care. Put your running shoes on. If God said it, get to Joppa. I don't care what you got to do. Get to Joppa. If God said, I'm going to bless you, you give $10,000 if he says to do it. You give it. You may not have anything left, but you write the check. If God said it, do it. Obedience in the word. The moment you obey, he begins the miraculous. Come on, somebody. The moment you began, you got to circle that verse in your heart. You got to circle that attitude in your spirit. You got to say, I will not be moved. I will not be denied. I'll not be talked out of this blessing. I don't care right now. I've been praying for God to bless me with a car. I don't care if the stock market crashes and every car is overpriced. God's about to pull up into my driveway with a vehicle. I will be blessed. But what I need somebody to do is say, that word is for me and step out and say, I'm about to take a 15 mile journey. My God, I feel like preaching. may look like a stay at home mama but there's nothing common about me come on somebody I'll never forget my fa- one of my favorite passages in scripture is this complicated interaction between Jesus and his mama at the wedding in John yeah They're running out of wine. And somehow, Jesus ends up in the back room with his mama and all the servants. And his mama says, Jesus, they have no wine. And Jesus says, Mama, that's got nothing to do with me. I'm on a prophetic journey. I have tied to my life the words that go back seven to 2,000 years. I am I am formed and framed before the beginning of time to answer God's call of grace. And mama says, I don't care. Now, only mama could do that, right? Then look at what mama does. She turns to all those, she doesn't say another thing to Jesus. She turns to all those servants and she goes to, and puts her hand on the door and she opens the door and she's about to close it and she looks at all those servants and says, whatever he says, obey it. And I feel, I feel, I feel that spirit here today. I'm opening the door and I'm telling all of y'all, whatever he says, I tell you how. He's about to turn some water into wine. He's about to bring some joy into somebody's life. He's about to change some circumstances in a generational capacity. He's about to open up the windows of heaven and bless you in a way that you never knew. But I want to tell you, whatever he said in his word, whatever he said, obey it to the hilt. Obey it with all of your strength. When did he turn the water to wine? I don't know, but I know when it started. I don't know at what point water turned to wine, but I know when the miracle started, when his mama said, obey the word. Obedience. Obedience and faith. Watch What happened? Peter receives this vision three times. It goes up into heaven. He's sitting there trying to figure out what to do with it. There's a knock on the door. They come up and say, Peter, there's three men down here asking for you. He goes, are they Gentiles? Yeah. It was unlawful for Peter to welcome them into his home. 
because they were Gentiles. And he would have never welcomed them into his home. But the word had already got to Cornelius. And Cornelius had already responded in faith. So Peter didn't have a choice. So I'm going to tell you now, God's going to put you into some places where people may not want to see you. People are going to say, I don't know why you're here, but I got a feeling you're here because I can't sleep at night. Now you hear me because I am preaching. I would that all of our people were here and the house was full and blah, blah, blah. But on a summer Sunday, hallelujah, I come to declare as your pastor over this house, God is going to put you before men that are not even going to be comfortable with you standing there and it's going to break everything that they're accustomed to but they're going to look at you and say I got no choice but to honor you I got no choice but to do what you want because I've been troubled in my sleep somewhere along the way you begin to obey you begin to obey a different kind of voice you begin to obey them It's possible. It's possible. Can I just preach crazy faith right now? It's possible that you can't get into the plant because as a company, someone else has got it sold up. Someone's brother-in-law is always getting that contract. Can I preach crazy faith today? But it's time for that mess to be over. They're going to have to let you in. Somebody's going to come down and say, hey, I know we've always done it this way, but I feel like we got to do something else. And all of a sudden, you're going to be standing there. You better get your numbers together. You better get your business together because God's about to bring you before men. You better look at that contract one more time. You better figure out how much money you can. God have mercy. Come on, somebody. You ought to be standing and clapping your hands right now. What are you sitting down on the man of God for today? You ought to be praising him for the blessing he's about to bring in the God. Somebody shout, yeah. yeah. If you obey him in a small manner. The Bible says that Peter comes all the way back down to the household of Cornelius. Takes the journey, takes his time. The whole next day they don't go. The whole following day they finally get there. Cornelius, meanwhile, whoo, he'd been cooking for everybody. He'd been telling everybody, you gotta stay. Something's coming. Something's coming. And finally, Peter walks in. And he don't, he don't cut any corners. He said, you know, it's unlawful for me to have you in my home, and it's unlawful for me to be here. But I'm here because you took a step. Now, what do you want? And he said, you got a message. He said, I, I perceive that God is no respecter. He began to preach Jesus. Watch. While he's preaching. He, he didn't even talk to them about the Holy Ghost. While he's preaching, the Holy Ghost fell. They didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost. They weren't coached on how to get the Holy Ghost. And this is what started this whole process. I said, God, I want to preach on some Sundays where I ain't got to beg a sinner to get to the altar, where I don't have to coach somebody into how to get the Holy Ghost. I want you to feel them when they're in the back. I want them trying to get out the back door, talking in tongues. I want you to bless them with the Holy Ghost. Now, I know you got to want it to get it, but I pray to God that some of you get to your car and think you escaped it, and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost hits you while you're in the parking lot. It's time for this church to have some miracles, some powerful, God-changing miracles. But I need somebody that will step out and say, my family, my household. Uh, stand with me today. Stand with me. Yes. Yes. They've been fishing all night. 
Had, no, no, they weren't catfishing. <laughs> They've been fishing all night. And Jesus comes and says to them, hey guys, won't y'all throw out, cast out a little bit and just throw out. Peter said, Lord, we fished all night long. Nevertheless, at thy word. So here's my altar call. I know you've been up here praying. I know you've been up here seeking him. I know he didn't do it. Nevertheless. Let me tell you a story about Sister Maxine. Sister Maxine lived to be 120,000 years old. Beautiful old saint, deep, deep voice. Should about that tall. And Sister Maxine got, got a tip that she was into the NBA, National Basketball Association. And she was watching games on a TV concealed behind a cabinet. For you old school Pentecostals, you know what, that, what that's all about. So I went over for a cup of coffee, but really I was going to figure it out. We're sitting there, and I said, Maxine, tell me something. Yeah, Pastor. Who's going to win the NBA final? Oh, God. <laughs> she said, Pastor, I open it up on Thursday nights, watch both games, close it, read my Bible, pray, and then go to bed. <laughs> I said, Maxine, it's beautiful. I think it's wonderful. She asked me that same visit. She said, Pastor, this is why she'd ask me, I want to go home. I'm tired of being here on this earth. Why won't God take me home? We had the same thing with Moki. You remember Moki? Many of you don't remember Moki because she wasn't in attendance for a number of years. She was in a nursing home. But one day she told her children, here's my Bible, you can have it, and cancel her newspaper. She was done with living. And so they called me, and I went up there. I said, Moki, you got to get your paper back, and I'm, I brought your Bible back to you. What are you doing? She said, I'm ready to go home. You don't have an opportunity to make that decision. God chooses. Why am I here? I'll tell you why, Maxine. Because when you pray for your pastor, while you're laying in bed, 89 years of word in your spirit. Well, when you say, in the name of Jesus, I pray for whatever spiritual warfare might be ongoing in my pastor's life, I pray you'd give him peace and power. I said, you might look like just another lady laying in a bed up in this nursing home, but that ain't you, Moki. And... You may, you may be just here on this earth in your own sense to eat a tomato every once in a while. But when you call upon the name of Jesus on behalf of FPC or when you send out angels to visit your children and your grandchildren, you're an uncommon person. So you may be just another Gentile according to the world standard. And it may look like everything is going to be the same for the next 25 years. But pastor come to preach to you this morning that if you'll have faith in the name of Jesus and if you'll be obedient to the word, there's an uncommon anointing that's coming upon you. There's an uncommon season that's about to come into your life. There's an uncommon calling that's about to come into your family. So, who's ready? What has the Lord said to you while you've, while you've heard your pastor preach? Maybe for some of you, he said, look, this sin, it's enough. Entering into a, a six-month covenant with him. Listen, we know that the prophets of old, we know that they struggle with sin just like we did. And yet, did he not say, I put a covenant that I will not put my eyes toward anything that would be unfit, right? What if you said today, I make a covenant 
I make a covenant not asking for God to keep me from danger. But I believe in this covenant is God releasing me to be blessed. Right? If you'll make that kind of covenant, I want you to step out and come. If you're of the household of Cornelius, I want you to step out and come. What impossible thing looms like a mountain before you? Is it a loved one that you desperately would love to see move? Huh? What impossible thing lingers out there? Some financial, some financial restriction that's got you in this cycle. Can he deliver from years of addiction? Yes. How long was that? You said it in the t- 25 years. So two, two or three Sundays ago, I was going to preach on a sermon that I still haven't preached yet. And God just hit this place. And at the very end, you remember how I talked about addiction, right? On that morning, on that morning, she was delivered from a 25 year addiction. (laughs) 25 years, 25 years. Broken, broken, broken. For the first time, she called her doctor and said, listen, it's on automatic refill, but I don't need it. Don't need it, don't want it, just shut it down. Don't need it sitting in the cabinet somewhere waiting for me. Do you feel what I feel? I feel good news just rippling through this house. I feel victory just rippling through this house. Look at you stepping out in obedience. Woo! Look at you saying, I'm ready to run 15 miles all night long. Come on, somebody. Throw your hands up right now and begin to declare. He's coming with healing. He's coming with blessings. He's coming with grace. He's coming to my family. He's coming to my children. Lift your hands and bless him right now. Just mumble it. Open your mouth right now. Open your mouth like a trumpet. Open your mouth. Let your flesh hear it. Let your enemy hear it. Hallelujah. This is my commitment. This is my passion. This is how I want to live. I will be blessed. I will be increased. I will be magnified in God's kingdom. Woo! Come on, high five somebody right there. Just high five somebody right there. I want you to rejoice with them right now. I want you to declare over their life right now. Get your passion back right here. Get your passion to pray. Get your passion to pray back right here. Get your passion to war back right here. I got that. I love you. You see, I Oh, it's Holy Ghost time. It's Holy Ghost time. I got that. Hallelujah. Believer, pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Believer, pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Woo! Shut Come on, find you somebody and bless them right now. Find you somebody and bless them right now. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. My season's coming. My season's coming. My hour's coming. He's about to bless you.
doing. Give him thanks right now for what he's doing. Hallelujah. You made your commitment. I give him thanks right now for what he's doing. Oh, I see somebody put their shoes on. Somebody's about to run. Somebody's about to run. Woo! Yes, 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 yes.
Hello, Pastor Jeff Rawson here. Thank you. Pray the blessings of God upon you this week as you continue to strengthen yourself in Him. And as you continue in His blessings, I pray that you'd remember First Pentecostal Church. Bless us with your finances. Bless us with your prayer. Combine with us, link with us, partnership with us as we do our best to get the gospel out to the whole world. I pray again that God would bless you this week. Thank you for joining us.